champion league. <laughs> Three of five fights with the champions rise. 305 with the solo campeones. We have Master Diego De Vera from KO Zone here. Thank you very much, Master Diego, for yes. coming. And I was just saying, I love having you here because you're a master in martial arts, very proficient. Your last name, De Vera, is good because eres De Vera. But you're also very welcoming, very sincere. You've helped the com not only through the fights, us, but you've helped the community in South Florida in martial arts. So thank you very much. Como dije anteriormente, me gusta que no solamente nos ayudamos en 305, pero estás ayudando a la comunidad entera en las artes marciales y en el arte de combate. Son muchas gracias. Thank you. So we were we were discussing, uh, you know, you're a black belt in taekwondo, kickboxing, Muay Thai champion. ISK, where you have the use ISK also, uh, WACO World, uh, as a kickboxing organization, tremendous organization. Uh, you started boxing when you were young, kickboxing, full contact. Um, but you also were talking up to me that you do a lot of tactical training. You train a lot of the military. Veo que te están entrando mucho tácticamente de los equipos de 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 militares, de policía. Talk to me a little bit about the tactical training. Yeah, I get involved with tactical training and the. Tactical training and martial arts because I, I have a military background in Argentina. I did the service and I was in the military school. So one day, one of my, it's like a brother for me, Sensei Nick Rios, that is one of my mentors too here. He, I was training him in kickboxing and he asked me if I can go to the Hialeah Police Department to help them train him. At that time, it was me and Master George Pereira. He was teaching Jiu Jitsu and I was teaching striking. So I, I and they have a range at the police department. So after the range, he invited me to start shooting, and he saw that I shoot pretty good. <laughs> so they helped me with lights and other stuff. So I started helping him teaching law enforcement, and the thing from them grew up. I, now I'm with my brother. I can say I can say that it's my brother Tony Sandman from Real World Tactical. He started with the company like a six, seven years ago. Started teaching civilians and law enforcement. Tony has a military background too. He's a marine. Uh, he's uh, 15, 16 years in the SWAT team in Hialeah. By the way, Hialeah SWAT team is one of the teams that have more operations in the year in the United States. So it's a great team. So he opened his company and I went with him to help him because he was doing the shooting plus the fighting. Mm -hmm. Because most of the people did shooting, but, but what about fighting? It's not, it's not the same shooting on the race when you are with the AC or in safe environment that actually under stress. So we mix together the fighting, the control, the shushitsu, and, and after that shooting. Correct. So that's the difference that we did. And, and because of that, we, got, we go all around the country teaching, yeah, that, teaching different things. I think the correct world that you said is real world. Exactly. And then later on, we'll talk a little bit more about that because I have a black belt in Southeast Asian Arts which is Kali, Sila, Kuntao, yeah, very tactical weapon. Yeah, that's great. And, and so you have I, to teach me something. I will okay. really love that. <laughs> and I, I like that because I want to talk about the sport, the art, and the tactical is self-defense. Exactly. Because they're three different things. Okay, first of all, before we do that, let's talk about the KO Zone. You're the CEO of the KO Zone. Tremendous facility, tremendous gym. I've been there. Thank you very much for hospitality there. Uh, what is the location of the KO Zone? We are on 301 Northwest 54th Street, Miami, it's Little Little Haiti. I can't say the word correctly. No. Little Haiti, <laughs> Pequeña Haiti. Little Haiti, Pequeña Haiti. Uh, before it used to be on Biscayne and 50, but we moved closer because the facility is bigger, it's nicer. So. And you, I, I mean, it's two stories. You have everything from pro shop, juice shop. On the bottom, and you can tell me, on the bottom I see you have the CrossFit, the weights, the gym. We have everything now, I, 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 like I told you, I merged together with Real World Tactical. Now it's Real World Chaos On. All right. Real World Strength and Fitness and Chaos On. My friend, my partner, Tony, he changed the whole uh, bottom of the gym. So we have new equipment, we have uh, all the power lifting platforms. Oh yeah, I saw your remodel. the of the equipment I, in the gym. I saw a remodel, it looks beautiful. There is no fighting gym in Florida who has all the condition and equipment that we have. No, I, I, like I said, I've been there myself and I can tell you it's, it's beautiful and it's fully functional. On the top, you have a boxing ring, bags, a cage, a jiu-jitsu. Ju so you have real world tactical, crossfit, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, jiu-jitsu. You have a kids class. 
Did I miss any programs? We have everything over there. No? If you are a martial artist and you go there, you don't need to pay another membership to go to another place to do conditioning. So yeah. you have all everything under one. Yeah, that's what I've liked when I've gone over there. And if you do conditioning, it's good because you go there, what happens? You start smelling the, the fighting <laughs> feeling, you know? So sooner or later, the second floor is going to soak you up and yeah. you're going to start doing balls. And that's what happened always. Yeah, yeah. And people like to say, okay, I do, even if you do conditioning, they like to say that they come to my place, chaos on, because, you know, it's not the same that you go to train to whatever no, uh, no, no. fitness gym no. that they have. No, the definitely, cool they definitely that. Uh, one of the things I like is, like I said, the real energy there. Um, what is the social media of the Chaos Zone? So if anyone wants to check I it out. I have Chaos Zone, it's uh, at Chaos Zone underscore real world. But if you put Chaos Zone, at the moment it's going to show the, our Instagram page. Excellent. And, and you said that's in uh, downtown Little, Little Haiti. Yeah. Lo curioso que usted está en el Chaos Zone, está en el downtown. Eh, ¿Cuál es la dirección? 301 Northwest 54th Street. Sí, yo empecé el arte marcial a los nueve años, muy cerca de ahí, en el Alapara YMCA. I know. Yo me crié en el Alapara. Y me gusta también que trae un ambiente muy necesario de la disciplina, arte marcial, el combate a esa área. Exacto. Sí, sí, sí. A, sí, sí. A esa Let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, being an owner of a professional gym, being a champion, being involved in all the athletes, let's talk about the sport. In the sport, to be a champion, what do you think you need physically first? Physically, consistency and perseverance, that's what you need. I know that it's not physically, but if you have that, you're gonna reach the other, the requirements to become a champion or a fighter or whatever. No, I'm glad you said that, because you know from experience, and I know from my, my experiences, that Everybody says they want to be a champion, they want to be a fighter. But I think fighting is the easy part. I think getting in there and doing that kind of That's a workout. That's the hard part. That's it. That kind of grind. There, uh, deal with the injuries, deal with the pain, we uh, deal with the, some, you know, some kids that, that don't have the money to do it. And it's not cheap to train. I'm not telling you that we are expensive or whatever, but if you need to train, you need to eat correctly, you need to pay your trainers, you need to pay the gym, you need to get the supplements, you need to buy your gear. Yeah. So there are so many things in No, you said three elements. It's very important that most people don't know. You need the time to train, you need the discipline to train, and you need some money or create some money to train. Those are three elements that are very important. Okay, let me ask you, uh, because I've also seen you sparring and training in, in there in the ring, um, and you're very technical, have very clean kicks, very clean punches, combinations. Technically, what do you think somebody needs to be a champion? Hard work and dedication. It's not from one day to other. It takes time. Now, what I see these days, uh, everybody wants to like, play that. And yeah. It's not like that. It takes time. The people are like, yeah, how you move like that? How you do this? How you do that? Oh, I have all my life doing that. Yeah. Okay? I see, we, we in the martial arts, with time, we see things that people don't see. I, I see the little mistake that you do, and that makes the difference, you know? The, yeah, that with is, experience and time, exactly. you see the details. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you said a very important, people don't realize that people like George St. Pierre, uh, the people that are the elite, it took them time. You know, I, I was teaching today, even when I teach my daughter, I, 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 show, I show them her things, or show my people. She said, how do you do the back spinning kick so clean, and this and that? Because it's not just a kick. There are so many details, and there are so many things that you have to do to reach that point. Some people can spin in the same, in the same spot without, lifting, without landing on the same spot. So, can you imagine doing that thing with one leg and the other here? No, it takes time, here. Yeah. Some people, it's natural to do it like that. But on the other side, there's people who never fought, and they have the, that wheel inside and that fire, that they don't have a technique, but they are great fighters too, because they have the... Yeah, definitely, it takes like a, yeah, That's the coleones. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it takes time, energy, and effort definitely to refine the techniques. Exactly. You mentioned your daughter, she's here with her. What's her name? Bianca. Bianca, bienvenido al estudio. Es también de Argentina. Sí. No, ella no es americana. Americana, soy americana y argentina. Americana. Sí, <laughs> eh. Ella se cree que es argentina. Ella quiere ser argentina. <laughs> okay. Claro. okay. Pero no. Bueno, bienvenido al show 305. Somos una familia. Uh, let me ask you now about the part of the art we mentioned before. For me, the art is the respect, the philosophy. What I liked again about your Kale Zone and yourself and the instructors is you guys are for real. You train for real but you've always been very respectful, helping out. Uh, it, it, 
it, for me, that's what a real man, a real martial artist, a real person with Corleones has, is that philosophy with the training. Uh, what's your opinion on that? I, I think they say that, you no? Know? It's like we were talking before. Uh, sometimes when the people is, you know, they don't have that kind of respect for the others, or they are aggressive, or they show you, I think because it's a lack of confidence. It's like the, when we say for the, the dog, el perro que ladra no muerde. Sí. So I was telling you before, I know people who is really hardcore, who been in, in very bad places, who saw very bad things, are the nicest people that you can meet, that you can talk. I, I, I have friends who been in war, who has to do very bad things for the situation, and they're super cool. They don't fuck with anybody. Yeah. But all the way, I know, I know people who never do anything, and they're like, ah, con ese aguaje, con esa... No, sí, no sí. Sí. Even fighters, even pro fighters, you know, you have to slow down a little bit because you have to remember that we have to lead by the example. Mm -hmm. We have to show the kids the correctly way to do the things, okay? For example, I say, I had the same trainer since I opened. How can you imagine that the same Jorge was me for 14 years? Gregory, Gregory Chopin, WBC Muay Thai World Champion, who was training with me since, since he got in USA, 12 years. Tony Semanario World Champion for 18 years. Why? Because I show them, I respect them. And we don't have that, that, you know, that ego, that thing, no, no, no. you know what? Yeah. So, so, we're all the same idea and we all finish in the same <laughs> yeah. And I think that's so important. Uh, that's why our logo is respect and discipline. Because to be the real deal, pa ser de verdad, de vera, Tienes que tener ese respeto, tienes que tener esa disciplina. Respeto al entrenar tuyo, respeto a los, respetarte tú mismo, la disciplina de, de entrenar y disciplinar. Yo le digo a mis, a mis alumnos siempre, o a la gente que entreno, cuando hablamos de, de defensa personal o lo que sea. Yo conocí gente súper técnica que levantaba el. Un compañero mío tenía, levantaba la pierna con los dos dedos, me sacaba la gorra, la bajaba y me la ponía de vuelta en la cabeza. Súper técnico, pero cuando venía la hora de rock and roll. La hora de que, bueno, a ver qué es lo que hay. So, tú puedes ser muy fuerte, tú puedes poner muchos videos en social media de pegándole a la bolsa, con la música atrás, todo. Pero un día tenés que pelear con esa gente que trabaja en la construcción 20, 12 horas al día, que tiene las manos así de los martillazos, que tiene cero de técnica, pero que te hace... ¡Rum! Te arrancaron la cabeza. Entonces, slow down. Yeah. You don't know who is in front of you. Yeah. I don't know if you have a bad day at home, if you carry a gun, right? If you fall with your wife, If you, if you don't have a job now, porque te echaron porque el COVID-19, si no tienes plata para pagar la renta, entonces capaz que estás medio loco, yo puedo tener mucha técnica, pero vos me pasás por arriba. Entonces, ¿sabés que es lo mejor, la mejor defensa? Sonreír, yeah. pedir disculpas, evitar la pelea. Correct. You know, you mentioned something very important, the psychological part. Exactly. The psychological, and you know what, this is a good topic. The psychological is so important because now we go to the self-defense and the tactical. You have a tremendous tactical program. The psychology, what I call tactics and strategy, uh, like you said, under pressure, uh, and the way you guys do it, I love it because you get the body tired, and under uh, tired you have to shoot, under anxiety, and my opinion uh, is that the tactic and the strategy of self-defense is not the same as sport. It's not the same. Can you want to talk a little bit about that? From, from my perspective, what I see, uh, until you don't feel, until you don't go through all the bad situations and you learn with the years to deal with that, everything you can learn sometimes doesn't go, doesn't work. Yeah. I was in Argentina in the military, working in the triple border between Argentina, Paraguay and Brazil, and you're walking in Chile with your <laughs> unit, and you start hearing shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Days before you were practicing position, <laughs> at that moment you forget everything. When the bullets come to decide, <laughs> so how you deal with that? You have to go through all that situation to start learning. The same in fighting. That's why you see the difference between a beginner, an amateur fighter, and a professional fighter. You see a fighter, Bernard Hobbs, Hobbs, whatever, they're chilling, they're really moving fighting. You see a, an amateur fight, they're like crazy punching like that because they still does not how to deal with the adrenaline, with the pressure, with the anxiety, with the, with, and everything, you know? So yeah. you know, I tell you what, I had experience. I was at the, actually taking casting for a, a low budget film. The gentleman trains uh, some of the police over there in Hialeah, and it was 
for a commercial and I was going to do a staff, a weapons form. And I had practiced like a whole month. I get in there, when I get there, there's this table with the directors, everybody, the cameras. They say, say your name and do it. And I walk up, I say my name and I went, and I can only do one move in four directions. The pressure, uh, everything went out the window. Imagine in a real fight. <laughs> yeah. Because you know the same fighting in the gym, the martial arts, but fighting in the street. Yes. That you don't have the corner, you don't have your coach, the floor is hard. Oh, yeah. So she's great, but you don't want to go to the floor on the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. So depending the situation, depending in all the things that you went through, is how you react. Some people get frozen, and some people fight like a, yeah. like a tiger. So. And I think that through correct training, you start acclimating, te acostumbras. Y ahí donde viene la destreza, el skill, and you get, and you get better. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit, because uh, I want to talk about all the great instructors and the great people I've met over there at the KO Zone. Um, of course, yourself. You also have uh, Tony Sentman. Tony Sentmanat. Sentmanat. Yes, I've seen him in uh, the tactical training. How big is that guy? He's he looks big because he used, he used some effects on the camera. No, no, he's huge. He's like a two, now he's in 240, 250 pounds. I think 240, 250 pounds of muscle. No. Yeah. Of, no, that is the. And he's like, a, I think six feet or five I, I've seen, uh, he's the biggest person I've seen. Muscular size, physical wise, and moves so agile. The agility that he has. That yeah. I, I was and the strength and agility, yes. And I've been in the sport for like uh, 33 years, 34, I don't remember. And I, I train thousands of people. I never saw anyone like him. With that size, with that strength, and with the agility that he has. Yeah, he I have people coming to the show. Oh, I, I want to train. I want to do the things that Tony Semana do. You go, brother. <laughs> have to start. You have to go back and train for another 20 years. <laughs> because he was training for a long, long time. You can reach that level mm -hmm. of fitness in a year. It takes time. Yes. Everything takes time. He's, Good things take he's time. A, he runs the, uh, the tactical with you. No, I go with him. Okay. I go with. We go together. But he's the he's the owner of the of Real World Tactical. My old my thing always was the fighting, the, the fighting sports, the night fight, and all that stuff, right? Uh, and he opened the company in shooting. So I go with him to everywhere. And you know, I love that merch, and I'll tell you why. Because I think the tactical and the strategic is even very important, even for combat sports. Exactly. It gives you a different mindset, and it prepares you. I think if somebody prepares like that psychologically, they'll do a lot better also in the ring. I was talking yesterday, I, have, I, I train a couple of people who are pro athletes in other sports, in tennis, and the other one is a basketball player. And I used to play soccer in Argentina, and know everybody plays soccer. People does not realize how much contact sports helps to the mentality, to the fighting mentality in other sports. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah. Because you know, we, we train and we fight, at the end of the day when they, you hit a ding, you fight alone. So it give you another another strength on your head. Yes, yes, I, I believe so. Um, do you have also that I met over there, I've actually trained with him, is Sensei George Elizondo, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But you know what's funny? Boxer too. Right? Yes, I was gonna tell you right now. I, I, I was in there and I was training with him and we were sparring together. And something that I loved from him and that I learned from him, and you know, there's no embarrassment. You can be whatever le level and you can learn from people. And something I learned from him, uh, aside from being great position, you see, to a great instructor, great person, is that when we were sparring in MMA, I said, wow, he can strike so good, and the jiu-jitsu, it's complete, very good. I, I, sometimes we spar with, with him, right? We spar together. So I connect him so hard sometimes, <laughs> and again, boom, <laughs> and he do Nothing. He's tough and he's in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you see him skiing like nothing. Uh, I don't know if he's because he from where he's coming in Argentina, that he's coming from the countryside and these tough people over there, or because uh, he's one of his main instructors is George Pereira. He's a tough guy. Yeah. You know, George is another level. So I have a rock band named Fight to Death. I named the band because of him. Because every time <laughs> they have an argument, say, okay, let's go, brother, let's go, tell them fight to death. You go, George, you're talking about me. It's not about fighting. So the one is fighting. Yeah, I, I've okay. seen it. That's one of the things that I, I like about his class, and I see his class that he does the art of jiu-jitsu, he does sport jiu-jitsu, but he's, they train very hard, very, uh, very... He loves jiu-jitsu. He's a, a real martial artist. Let me tell you why, because sometimes, uh, all the things are not great, you know? Sometimes, even now, we are struggling. 
know? It's not easy to pay the rent. You know how yes. much other rents in Miami, exactly. and I have a huge place. Sometimes I didn't have money to pay the rent. I didn't have money to pay the salaries. Even though he was coming and teaching for free, because he loved to teach. He yes. doesn't miss one day. And he do it because he loved the sport, he loved the martial art, and he loved his Yes, what a, a much respect to him and his fighters. That's what I love about him. That's what I've, we've shared together. Uh, he's, he's had some of his fighters actually be our champions through our fights. And I like that because we have to, we're sending a message and communicating right, to people right. of what is to be a real martial artist. Not just what you see on TV. Right, right, you know, right, not right. just in the, in the media. Um, I've also had the opportunity to train with uh, Melissa the Hurricane Hernandez, Melissa. box boxing champion. Seven time world champion in both, seven or eight times. Yeah. Like a legend. Yeah, and she, a legendary. And I like her style of boxing because it's, try to don't get hit as little as possible. She's Boricua. Yeah, yes. They're like, oh, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've also a uh, great guy who's really, uh, really helpful. I took, I took, and was with him once in the morning in his multi classes, Tony Lupe. Right. Yeah, I had a picture of him here with um, the gentleman Tony from the other Tony from the tactical, and you had a professional wrestler that um, was was taking the the strength and conditioning class. Yeah, that's uh, Seamus. Yes. Seamus. He, yeah. he came to train with us. I don't know from where from what other state he came. He came to spend two days training with us. Yeah. With Tony and, with and much respect to all those teachers. Uh, of course, legendary Muay Thai world champion. Jeffrey Choplin. Gregory Choplin. Gregory, Jeffrey, Gregory Choplin. Um, well, he's training uh, George Masvidal. Yes. George Masvidal. He's training Corey Covington. All the guys, all the UFC fighters who are around in Florida, they come to train with him. Yes. He's, he's one of the most technical guys that I know. Yes, I've been in the morning. I've been in the morning working out, and he's been in the ring working technical with uh, Masvidal. Right. Who's fighting this weekend? We'll, t we'll talk about that. Once in a while, we cross each other when we fight, right? So I, I was fighting with him one day. I'm not the best one, but I, for even for my age, I kind of fast. I always been fast, super fast. So I was fighting with him, and that guy, that Gregory Choplin, is, is my brother. He put his right hand in behind and started fighting me with one hand. I, I, I couldn't find the way to touch. Yeah. He's so good. He I made me feel like if I was a big yeah. well, well, I'm glad I'm, I wasn't the only one that felt like that. <laughs> I was trying to just get past his jab. No, 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 God. I, I, I don't know what, I think it happens, an extension in there. I don't know how it <laughs> You go from here to the camera like here. Yeah. But you know, that goes again. The combination of hard work, correct training, physical training, correct technical training, exactly. and the correct mental perspective. Th those are the key ingredients. Uh, I was going, you've had incredible champions, UFC champions, MMA champions. I saw also you had Yorkis Gamboa training. Uh, a video of training the, in the KO zone. Yeah, and the old KO zone. Yeah, used to be yeah. With you've me. had a lot of champions go through there. You know, congratulations on that. Um, that's good for South Florida because it helps us uh, give us prestige. It also helps communicate and educate people. Um, let me ask you, in the martial arts, okay, let's say to be a mixed martial arts champion, a combat boxing champion, kickboxing, with all these people you've had, Again, you said it takes the physical, the nutrition, the mental, the technical. Um, but I also think one of the things you guys have, and I think it's important, is you need to have a relationship, trust, respect your instructors. Sometimes, exactly. sometimes the young guys, you see, I see sometimes, you know, I'm old school. So sometimes I see the young guys kind of tell the coach what to do a little bit, what I would call the yeah, well, we don't do it. We, we, we didn't do that before when we were young. Right. I didn't say, hey, we do it. No. We go to the class and we close your mouth and do whatever they say. <laughs> now times change a little bit, but, but you no. Know, remember, after a while, we had the opportunity to put all together in the arena. Yeah. So I like that because you have to have that relationship and that respect. You have, it, that, that's one of the things that I think is one of the key factors. Let me ask you, the UFC is coming now. We have Fight Island. Um, we're going to have Masvidan and Osman. Uh, let me ask you about that fight. What do you think about the fight? It's very difficult, eh? See, yeah, yeah. 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 Both of them are tough guys. Yeah. yeah. Do you think? And, uh, and Masvidal is training for a long time with Paulino. But Paulino is a great instructor, too. Yes. A great instructor. Do you think, even though it was a six-day notice, do you think he's going to uh, have a good opportunity? One here, one good thing that I hear about uh, this fight, but about Masvidal, I like, he said he, I was, he will keep training. So we, like a martial artist, 
you have to continue training, you know, every day you have to be ready for whatever. That, that's a good point that you're putting. It's okay if you fight and you take a break for one, two weeks, but you have to keep, when you reach that level, you have to keep going. Yeah. You can't have that, you know, like, okay, no, we're not yeah. going to cheat now for a year. No, well, you know what, that, like that. I'm old school too, and I think that's the old school mentality, I think it's very important. I've heard fighters that all of a sudden say that they're training, they don't train until like six weeks, four weeks, only if the training camp before the fight. No, 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 no. For, me, that. That, for me, that's unheard of. Let me tell you something. My, my daughter saw me during that hard time. I don't know if you know, but I have bilateral hip replacement. No. I have both hips replaced. Wow. Four years ago. I was, I always remember one story, right? I was in a point that I, got, I couldn't get out of the car. I was pain, 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 to, taking oxycodone like a six, seven a day for the pain and doesn't do anything. I think that no one saw me stopping training. I keep training, even with pain. Doing my leg extension, walking with the crane, walking with the walker, but I, I, I never stopped training. No, I would never get So stopped. I get the surgery. Four days later, I start training again after the surgery. And the doctor told me, don't stop, keep working. One month later, I was running again. Two months later, after getting a hip uh, I was in the ring, teaching classes, and start moving again. Think about that, right? Uh, Two things. My dad used to tell me uh, that I want to tell you before when we were talking about the, the fighting mentality and what we train. He told me, you have to learn how to fight because waking up every morning and going to the street is a fight. So you have to become a fighter, even if you don't fight. You have to become a fighter. And about the psychological part, uh, you know, all the sports are hard. At the top level are hard. But fighting is the hardest one. Why? Uh, you have a fight in a month, in two weeks, always your brain played against you. <laughs> you are not going to say, okay, I'm going to fight, I'm going to, yeah, you think I'm going to win whatever, but I think, oh, but, but if I'm, I'm not ready, we're never ready for the fight. Always something happens. You have an injury, you have a pain, you don't sleep, you have problems at home or whatever. Uh, and you have to keep going, you have to keep doing your thing. And you are fighting and you are thinking, oh, I'm going to fight, I'm going to break my leg, I'm going to be like that. And it's, the psychological part is so important. People don't realize yeah. that. You know, that sometimes you get to the fight and you are so nervous that if you don't have a good coach, if you don't have a good, sometimes a good team, mm -hmm. you need your team, you need your, your family uh, staying with you, support you, your friends, everybody. Because at the moment that you fight, there are so many things on your head that you can, you can lose the fight. You know, you said something that's so important and I'm glad you're saying it because they're hearing it from an outside point of view. So it's, it's, we say sometimes that people sometimes think, oh, this, He's saying like a little story. He's saying it to sound nice. Te está diciendo un cuento de hada, pero the, it's a reality and it's a truth. We we put where the champions rise because we live in the United States, South Florida we fights. We have people Central Sud America, Latin America, the Caribbean. There are people that are working every day para surgir, to rise. They're fighting, están luchando, like the process every day. Life is a battle every day. Exactly. I try, and I tell people, listen, martial arts prepares you for daily life because daily life is a battle. So we put these names up and we put these levels. It's not because it was just going to look good. It's because that's what we've learned through our experience that we want to communicate and educate. That, that's what it is. And that's going to make you successful. Which, by the way, you, you're very successful business owner. Yeah, it, but that's, that's the point. You know, for example, I came here in 2001. 2002. I don't know if you know, but in 2001, the economy in Argentina collapsed. So when my father used to have trucks and warehouse, right? and we lost everything, zero. After that, my dad, for all the stress and things, he died. My mom with cancer. I came here with nothing, zero. A company that used to work selling uniforms. <laughs> okay, you want to go to, to try? Well, yeah, let me go. I used to, I supposed to go to Italy to, to fight for the uh, Muay Thai title, from the East Camp Muay Thai title, or come here. So you know what, my future first. I knew that I'm not gonna survive. I'm not gonna make money, money to help my mother fight. So I came here and I opened my, my gym because I was saving money because after six, seven years, I was teaching so many classes and doing so many private classes. I didn't make money doing private. that I was able to save some money and with the partner, I opened the first chaos zone. But the first chaos zone that it wasn't this monster mm -hmm. that I have now. It was a small thing like that. And after working, 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 and make it grow, grow, grow. But it's, you know, I know you only can do that thing here in this country. And that is the warrior spirit. Y ese es el espíritu del guerrillero. El, el guerrillero, el mambiso, no sé cómo le dicen en Argentina, es ese espíritu. Y, y por eso 
eh, uno lo dice y lo tiene en el logo y no es una fantasía, no es un cuento de hadas, es la verdad. Uh, you talked about, I, I, I'm glad that you talked a little bit about yourself, something else, because I co-produced the music for Trevor Fights, I love music, and you are a musician also, and you, uh, you go talk a little bit about that. I saw you doing your heavy metal, and I said, you know what, this guy's not only for real heavy and fighting, but even his music is heavy, is heavy metal. Me, me gustó que nosotros coproducimos la música nosotros, nosotros incorporamos mucha música y le damos una plataforma artista porque quiero combinar los artes con esto y vi en la música que estaba haciendo la música heavy metal y yo dije, Concho cuando quieras te vuelvo, decime y, y con, dije, Concho, este, este no solamente es duro en la música pero es la música heavy metal, habla un poquito de la música la música, está, empecé a los 5 años a tocar guitarra clásica soy profesor de concertista de música clásica y toqué por todos lados y nunca paré la, en la música, en los deportes nunca paré siempre hice lo que me gustaba, porque una cosa es el trabajo y otra cosa es la pasión cuando tú dejas de hacer algo que te gusta, cuando dejas tu pasión es como que te apagas, como que te mueres entonces yo nunca dejé eso eh, y la música toqué toda mi vida eh, al tocar música clásica son cosas complejas me gustaba mucho el rock y el heavy porque tiene, es muy difícil de tocar entonces he grabado de todo, he grabado con, con música melódica porque me pagaban para grabar música melódica, cumbia, lo que sea pero lo que me gusta es el rock y el heavy entonces siempre me dediqué a tocar eso Excellent. tuve de gira por todo Estados Unidos con varias bandas, los buses Tuve mi rockstar life too. Yeah. You, you said a word that's very important, passion. I always say to people, I don't do fashion, I do passion. Yeah. And that's one of the things in Triple Fights that we have the MMA, we have the kickboxing, we have the grappling, the jiu-jitsu, but we also have a platform for recording artists. We co-produce our music, oh. we have reggaeton, rock, we have performers that perform because we're also giving them a platform. Cool, that's great. And you know what people don't realize? The connection between the arts you don't have an idea how many fighters that I know that they play as an instrument. Yes. For example, my drummer is a Muay Thai fighter. The other singer, he does Shih Tzu. The kid who plays the bass, he do kickboxing. So I I'm good, I know like, yeah, whatever. No, they're a great player. Yes. So uh, there's yeah. a connection between the music and the martial arts. I don't know why. I have to find that one. But you know what, even one of my old uh, Chinese, my teacher's teacher, Shang Dong Chen, a very famous uh, Chinese wrestler, Sui Jia wrestler. He used to play the lute, which is like a, a Chinese guitar. How many samurais play the flute? Yes, correct. And, and you see uh, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was the king of cha-cha. He danced before he won. Well, let me tell you something about the music. The music gives you some connections in the brain that becomes you multitasking. Because you are listening, you are reading, you are playing different things and you feel. Some people, some directors can hear what each instrument is doing. So, fire is multitasking here too. You have to analyze your opponent. You have to see what is he doing, and you have to think what you have to do. So, I think that between something like that, there is connection in some point there. Yeah. But it's because of that. No, and you know, martial arts in Chinese martial arts they call it skill, destreza. And in music, you need skill and passion, destreza y pasión. Master Diego, it's been really an honor and a pleasure. Thank it's you. so great. We got to communicate. I learned a lot more things about you. Hopefully, we could communicate and educate everybody. This passion of the martial arts. If you want to contact Master Devera at KO Zone, again, again, what is your contact information? Is uh, you can go to KOZoneUSA.com. That's our web page. Our Instagram Instagram page is at KOZone underscore Real World. But if you type KOZone, it's gonna pop up at the moment. Uh, or you can send us an email or whatever you want. You know, we, for sure we're gonna replay like this. Excellent. If you want more information, also you can contact us at Three of Fights TV. I want to just tell all the martial artists to stick together, to support each other, promote the martial arts. There is yeah, no. Yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. You know, that's when I wanna finish. Uh, our sport is so hard, so complicated. We have. Thank you guys that you're doing something for the community. But there is no places. It's like the music. There is no places to play. There is no places to fight. You can fight every other three, four months, there is nothing here in South Florida. So we have to stay together. Okay? I have no problem with my students go to different academies to learn. And that's the way to grow the martial art. You know? We have to grow the martial art community, stay all together. Uh, and I think that if we do that, forget about that Shelo Siano, go to the Playo, they don't know anything. Well, we learn from each other. You learn from the people who doesn't know anything. Okay? So uh, I would love to you know to invite everybody, everybody to my place. And if you want to tell me, Diego, send me your students to train to my place, I'm glad to go with them and train with you guys. That's our purpose. 
we promote all the combat sports leagues, all the schools, all the instructors, respect and honor to all of them. They're, if we come together, I think we're going to do a lot better. Um, everybody has something to teach everybody. Oh, yes. I want to give you one of our three foot fights. Yeah, I was waiting for that. I was looking at the t-shirt. When is he going to give me the t-shirt? Just, just a thank you for everything uh, you've done for three foot fights, for the community. That's cool. Thank you so much. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Three foot fights is where the champions rise. 305 is where the champions rise. Three foot fight Miami! The champion league! <laughs>